today we are with Rick Asherson. Hey Rick, where are you from? Uh, originally from London, England. All right. How did you get to Tuscaloosa, Alabama? Well, it was a somewhat roundabout thing, but my first day in Alabama uh, was when I went to Willie King's Freedom Creek Festival in 2001. And uh, that very first day I felt right at home and somehow I ended up staying with Willie on his in his trailer out in Piggins County and never left. Okay. That's the real short version. Right. <laughs> How did you get into music? I, I've been playing since I was a kid for my own entertainment, you know, more for sort of personal expression and emotional relief. And I never got serious about performance until uh, I hooked up with Willie, uh, which was, you know, 2001, 14 years ago now. And since then, I did a lot with Willie, including two CDs we produced together and took him to Europe and really had a great time. And it was, it was, it felt like an honor and a blessing to be spending time with the real deal, authentic. These are the folks who made the music, who lived the life uh, of the music that I love. And uh, he unfortunately died uh, 2009, I think. And so since then, me and Debbie, who I met through Willie when I was staying down there, uh, have been doing our own thing, done two CDs, and we're slowly growing our repertoire and uh, of uh, venues and events and doing uh, a larger, increasing, uh, increasingly su uh, successful little tour in Europe. Okay. How do you feel if they feel about us in Europe? I think Europe loves the southern thing, you know, in a way that we might not, we, us Alabamans over here, if I put on my Alabama hat, you kind of, it's easy to take for granted the culture you live in. Uh, I think the people, the blues fans over in Europe are often very educated. They really know about the blues more than most people. And they just love the real deal, authentic, down-home blues. Uh, and really appreciate it when uh, when we went over with Willie. I mean, they just loved him, you know, in a way that you don't, you don't, just don't see it over here. Um, and I think that's partly because it's, you know, it's a long way away. And uh, to get someone who you've heard about growing up in a kind of way of life that you've seen on TV or read about, but is far from your own experience, people just really appreciate seeing the blues musicians in Europe. And, you know, when I was growing up in the uh, 60s, blues was hot. Blues has always been uh, uh, an important music form in England. But it was uh, a whole lot there with blues rock that was happening then. Well, you know, well, yes and no. Um, uh, we had Eric Clapton. He can be blues, I mean, you know, covers a bit of ground. And But uh, John Mayall, I think, really, he's a, he's a leading man and he, he wasn't so rocky, you know. He, he loved that blues. Um, and then the Rolling Stones did that CD with Howlin' Wolf, uh, London Sessions, mm -hmm. which was interesting. So, I mean, there's just a lot, a lot of appreciation. Um, Peter Green was a really good blues guitarist from, from uh, Fleetwood Mac. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's a bit like here, you have to seek it out, but it, it was it was happening over there. Long John Baldry. <laughs> Long John Baldry. <laughs> remember him? He gave a lot of people his starts. I do remember Long John Baldry. In fact, I just met someone the other day who specifically told me about his one show with Long John Baldry. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't quite remember who it is right now. Yeah. And, uh, Anybody else you remember from another day? Uh, well, there was there was a very good um, music program called the Old Grey Whistle Test, mm -hmm. you know, and he showcased he liked traditional. Old, you know, he covered a lot of ground, but the blues was always included on that. Um, and then since then, the the uh, singer from Manfred Mann, Paul Jones, mm -hmm. um, has been doing continues to do a blues show, a very successful blues show on the radio, national radio in the, in the UK. And uh, who's the other person I was just thinking of just then? Uh, I can't think of it. I have to leave that for another time. <laughs> yeah. But there's always, you know, uh, England's what, such a tiny country, uh, geographically, but it's, it's very vibrant. It's very, it's a small place, very close knit. So there's, um, and there's just a lot of, there's always been a lot of interest in the blues. You know, it comes and goes like it does here, but they are, there's a significant minority who are big fans. Mm -hmm. From what I hear, it's coming right now. You say come and go, it's coming right now with the 
advent of so many hot Alabama acts? Well, I think Alabama, despite itself, is managing to get a bit of a worldwide reputation uh, push, bump, uh, for its music. And it's not just the blues, you know. Uh, it's always amazed me how uh, other states have been very successfully promoted their musical backgrounds and heritage. And Alabama, who has the king of the uh, father of the blues, the queen of the blues, and... Uh, and um, your man in Montgomery for country. Why Hank Williams? Hank Williams. Why we're not? Why us Alabamans aren't more upfront and uh, celebratory of our musical heritage? Because it's really fantastic. So um, can't remember your question right now, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you're quite involved again with the Alabama Blues Project. Yeah, I married into it, as they say, and uh, embraced it. I've really enjoyed working with the kids and. Uh, we worked a lot with Willie King when he was with us, and we'd have the old guys, Eddie, Eddie Kirkland and uh, Willie King, and then Shaw Baby, who's still with us up in Birmingham. And mm -hmm. we'd, we'd have a lot of the old people come in, and then we'd help train them up in between whiles. And it was a wonderful um, connection between the, the old people, the, the veterans, the kind of younger folks like us who are kind of up and coming trying to do it, and then young folks who are just beginning. You know, it was, it's a wonderful thing. Yes, it is. And that's how it keeps rolling. Yeah, it's still with us. We're working with the advanced band these days. We've got a nine-piece band, and they're sounding great. All right. Tell me about tell me, tell me about some of the students. Well, my, my favorite one, because they're all great, but mm -hmm. uh, our drummer, he first came to us when he was eight, and he was, you know, really short, and he would just stand, literally stand in front of the drum kit and stare at it. He didn't want to sit down. He didn't want his snack. He just wanted to stare at the drums. And then uh, the drum instructor, who's Jesse Subtle at, the, at that point, would come in and start, you know, setting up, and he just he just couldn't get enough of it. He's now 11, and he's just a really good drummer. I can't, you know, I'm not much of a drummer at all. But it's not about teaching him how to play the drums. It's about getting him to stop playing too many riffs, <laughs> <laughs> or to get quiet when he should. It's more about how to play with others. It's not about his musicianship, which is great. Good kid and really lovely feel for music. What's his name? He's Mackayam. Mackayam. Mackayam, someone or another. Okay. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, with, with children, you're not allowed to have favourites. No, he's a new no, he's a, he's a bit old, great. And then uh, the bass player is also great. He's a, he's a young kid called uh, Josh. Josh, Joshua. Uh, and he sounds like, if you close your eyes, he sounds like he's from the 50s. It's just, he's got this just very old-fashioned timing, and he just right solid on the groove and just does a lovely job. Um, They're playing tomorrow night it, it, both down here and a little bit at the Dino Washington place so if you want to come on down. They're also, uh, we got them this year at the um, Bob Sykes Barbecue and Blues Festival in mm -hmm. Birmingham and Freedom Creek. They always play Freedom Creek Festival which I've been running since Willie died and um, he always opens with gospel and then we have the Blues Camp Band and then we get on with the rest of the show. Okay. Tell me about more. Yeah, tell you about more. Well, I have really enjoyed... When I met Willie, it, I was completely new to music as a business in any sense whatsoever. Uh, I'd never really played hardly at all in public. You know, at that point I'd been playing for 40 years or so, but, you know, at home, just taking me away. So I, have, I love playing music. I just really enjoy it. And I, I love... With Willie, you learn music is about communion. The purpose of music isn't to show people what you can do, it's to um, create uh, an environment which suddenly the music and the people listening get to be one event, just enjoying the creative spirit, making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Um, so that was that. And then you realise there's a hell of a lot of business. Uh, these things don't happen by themselves. And getting a band to a festival, you can't imagine how many people are involved. And quite a bit of paper as well, as it turns out. So. I've spent the last 10 years getting to know a lot about the music business, uh, playing and the other side of it, and I, I really enjoy it. It's a fascinating thing. And um, Alabama is just full of good musicians. It is amazing everywhere you go, at any style. <laughs> mm -hmm. And people with incredible histories, you know. You meet this old, some old guy sitting down in the corner and he's, he's been out on the road 30 years ago playing with people whose music I still love to listen to. I had somebody tell me the other day, Alabama music, they set the standard higher. They sure set it high. There's no doubt about it. I think that's just because there's so much of it. 
you know, uh, there's just so much of it. Um, and that's another thing, why, why aren't we, why is it not more well known? And uh, that does seem to be what's happening right now and not, you know, the tourist, Alabama tourism having their Sweet Home Alabama stage at this festival we're going to in England, I think that's, that's really great and I think Alabama deserves and should be known much more for its musical heritage because uh, that's, I joined Debbie in really loving Alabama's musical, you know, the music but that comes from here, particularly the blues, and just amazed at how there's a need to let people know about it. Okay. We should mention the Maverick Festival. I don't know if we have, and so if it does come up, we <laughs> let people know it's actually the Maverick Festival in England that's doing this. Just, uh, it's the Maverick Festival really? that has the Sweet Home Alabama stage. Right, and for people who don't know, Maverick is a magazine, a, a very slick magazine. Music magazine? Uh-huh. And it was voted the best um, Americana. Americana Festival last year in the UK. And there's a big Americana film movement in, in England. There's even a UK Americana Society, which is, you know... We're a member of that. <laughs> and it's really cooking. Uh, and of course, mostly, the, mostly Americana, I think, just means everything that doesn't easily fit into any other box. You get it. But, <laughs> you get it. You get it. But broadly speaking, people tend to lump it mostly with mostly acoustic. You know, it's more this sort of... Um, new grass and bluegrass and alternative country, but it, it stretches to, you know, blues and soul, which isn't s strictly down the traditional lines. That's, that's where we are, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Blues is changing. Oh, tell me about it. And, uh... We, we've, um, we've been judging, we've been judges sometimes and or just visited the Memphis uh, Blues Foundation's annual Challenge. competition, mm -hmm. and it's just fascinating to see, you know, the people who go there and my, my experience is very, very few uh, of the bands I would call traditional blues. They're blues E, you know, mm. they're blues rock, they're country, blues inflected country. There's something other than traditional blues. I really don't see a lot of people playing blues in the spirit of Willie King, who's my standard of traditional blues. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's less so of, of acoustic or those two piece, you know, people still like to play their old style guitar and stuff. but. Uh, when it comes to bands, I think there's a real... People are moving on and trying other things, which hopefully creates more possibilities and they'll come back again to the real the roots at some point. It'll come back, because it's just wonderful stuff. Rick, yeah. why don't you... You have strong commentary on on that Rootsy Blues and what you when you first met me, all the people I was working with, and yes. now... They're all dead. <laughs> they really are. I mean... And just not not only the Alabama ones, but I mean, you know, BB King has pretty much stopped performing. I think. I mean, the the old guys aren't just aren't with us. And I think this music was created. You know, music reflects the people who make it. And uh, thank God, nobody tends to live the life these days that the people who made the blues in the early days did. So I don't think you're ever going to have it just the same as it was. But um, I think that older generation has pretty much left us, almost, not completely, but very much. And so we're, we're, we're dealing with the next stage, and people always want to evolve and, and innovate, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I think after a while you get so far off, you, you, people tend to roll back and want to look back to where it all came from. And that, that's still where my heart is most closely associated with. I, I really like the, the old stuff and, and the spirit that they express of... Um, celebrating and surviving life in difficult times mm. with, with great art. I mean, that's, that's quite a human achievement. Great ending, too. <laughs> <laughs>